Pastor Favorite from Eula Baptist Institutional Church will now give the invocation. May we all bow our heads. 
Father, today we come before thy holy presence asking you once again to order our steps. We thank you for having ordered the steps of our mayor. We thank you for the forward progress of our city. We work the works of our mayor and our city council. Our, even our gospel choir, they have enlightened us today with your words in song. We thank you for all that you have done for us individually and then collectively. We thank you, Lord, for holding us up. We acknowledge that everything that we have, you gave us everything that we know you taught us. And where we came from, you brought us. And we acknowledge that we cannot make this journey by ourselves. Our city is moving forward. Our mayor is standing tall, and he has the support of our council. And we thank you for allowing us to be partakers today, even those of us who are here to hear his address. We pray that we will leave enlightened and that we will have a double determination to do positive things that will bring about positive change. We ask these blessings today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please rise for the presentation of colors by the City of Tampa Police Department and Tampa Fire Rescue. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. I'd like to direct your attention to the TV screens to the right and left sides of the stage as we begin the annual State of the City presentation. transformation has taken place regarding the relationship between the city and county. Those geographical and parochial boundaries that once existed no longer do. I'm just amazed at the leadership in this community. We've got young, young leaders, we've got seasoned leaders in this community, and, and they tend to work together and they get things done, and it's made, that job, made our job that much easier. I feel that over the last five years, there has been a real push to bring in leaders for the downtown uh, core that are open-minded, they are collaborative. We've never had as much activity, certainly in the last year and from what I've heard in many years prior, as we do right now. 
I think it's a sign of the, the leadership, the RMC, the efforts that we put into that, the economy being on the upswing. It fits into the message from Mayor Buckhorn that now is the time. Uh, we're seeing that from companies as well, is they're, they're making decisions about where to expand, how to expand, and this is where we want them to add their jobs and add their investment is right here in Tampa and Hillsborough County. We think the best days for Tampa are right in front of it. And uh, I think there are new leaders who have come into town and, and in some ways helped Tampa take stock of itself. Um, this is a great place, uh, admired by people all over North America, and uh, our best days are right in front of us. I want us to not only duplicate what we see in other places like Charlotte or Austin, but I think we can do it better here because our climate here is much better, and I mean business and weather. The difference in the percentage of Hispanic or Latino-owned businesses today versus 12 years ago is significant, but mainly because we've had such a huge uh, community or population coming and relocating here from different parts of the United States or the world. Well, I hope to see a more manufacturing, a more regional mentality among all, all of the citizens. Uh, I see that with the leadership in all of the communities and the legislature and, uh, and the city and uh, county officials that I've been working with. Uh, I'm very uh, bullish on Tampa's future. I see more cargo, I see more cruise passengers, and I see more people seeing our city as an international destination. You know, it's interesting when I bring visitors down from out of state to Tampa, they look around and say, oh my gosh, look at this place. This, this would be my first choice to build <laughs> of where I want to build my next technology startup company. Some of the projects that the city and county are partnering on include parks and recreation, transportation, and cost sharing on technology and services. These all immediately come to mind in those areas where we're currently working together. However, without a doubt, economic development has to be the best example of the success we are having. We have been in lockstep on nearly every new economic retention and business project we have seen in this community, and there have been many over the last two years. I'm hoping to see a, a, a downtown within a downtown. Uh, this community, I think, in the next five, ten years, I don't think you'll recognize this area. Uh, we've got an opportunity to rebuild this end of downtown. We've got an opportunity to move people in the downtown area. And we've got an opportunity to not only move people in downtown, but have an opportunity to add business uh, business opportunities in this community. Tampa's different today than three years ago. Um, it's The economy has certainly gotten better. Um, and I think what, what were once dreams are now becoming reality. Um, a dream of this building being full every night and the lightning being back on track and celebrating 20 years by thinking about the next 20 years. Tell them about this new focus on uh, uh, a collaborative effort to market our region as uh, a great place for companies to bring their businesses, to invest their capital, really more importantly to bring their people there, the people that work for their companies to invest in our community. I think Tampa is on the move. This is Tampa's time from a social perspective, from an economic perspective, from just developing the life sciences in this area. We all have this common vision of building a great community together, and it's fun to see us work and try to solve problems together. This is part of the story I like to talk about when I talk about Tampa as being a great place to live and work and play. Um, the people here, um, make it really easy uh, to find those connections and find the support that you need. I love Tampa, and I love Tampa Bay. Uh, uh, the amount of things that there are to do here, the, the, the economy, the diversity of industry, the opportunity with the universities and culture. Uh, this is a, a, a big city, but it has this small town feeling. Get involved. You can make a difference in your community. There are opportunities here. You know, there's a lot of cities where people sort of shut out. In this community, the, the mayor and others embrace ideas. I believe wholeheartedly that we are on the move for a brighter future for this community. I came here with hopes, and uh, I live here now with, you know, a realization that many of the hopes we had are going to be fulfilled, that we're going to build out a wonderful sports and entertainment enterprise that the land we've acquired is going to be developed and that uh, Tampa's poised to take its rightful place as the next great American city.
and now Mayor Bob Buckhorn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. It's, uh, I was just expecting a few of my staff to be here today. I didn't realize that we were going to uh, have standing room only, but thank you very, very much. It's, uh, it's a reflection of the electricity that is coursing through the veins of this community. But I, I got to tell you, it's a little intimidating standing up here after Detective Sonia Wise just ripped the roof off this building. <laughs> How about that City of Tampa Gospel Choir? Good morning, everybody. It is indeed good to be here in this magnificent structure. How many of you walked into this building today and the first thing that you did is stand there and look at, in awe at what this could be? How many of you did it? I know I did. So to Jeanette Jason and the Jason family that owns this, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be here. Thank you for tearing down the walls. Thank you for opening up this building so that the world could see. Thank you for what the future holds for this structure. Let's get this building done. This is a magnificent building. To the members of the City Council that are here before me, my partners in this effort, my partners in this movement, thank you so very much. It has been a wonderful two years. We have gotten a lot accomplished. My friend Charlie Miranda, who I had the privilege of serving with a number of years ago as Chairman of the City Council and these six other great members of this City Council who understand that it's not about us individually, it's about us collectively, and the work that we do today is going to pay dividends for decades. To all of the neighborhood leaders and friends who are here today, thank you for joining us today. To fellow Tampanians, buenos dias, and welcome, and welcome. We are gathered today in this historic Crest Building to hear the state of the city. Before I would begin, I would like to ask all of the elected officials that are here today, including the former elected officials, and I saw my friend, my predecessor, one of the folks that built the great foundation that I stand on today, Former Mayor, former Governor Bob Martinez is here today. Would all the elected officials stand up today? Yep. You know, two years ago I was elected to serve as your mayor, and I got to tell you, I got the best damn job in the world. I love coming to work every day if it's not obvious. I may not be the mayor of my own house, but I love coming to work every day. And I fall in love with this city every day. From the very beginning, I told you that we could be one of America's greatest cities, a place where our children are proud to call home, a place where they want to return to, a place where the best and the brightest around the country want to come and be a part of, a place where we grow the companies that we have and we attract the jobs that we want. Jobs of the future, not jobs of the past. Jobs that allow our citizens to move into middle class and beyond. Today I stand here today, two years into this term, to tell you that our efforts, your efforts, are paying dividends. Our opportunities are and our potential are in one word, infinite. For the last couple years we've been locked in a recession. Our economic focus wasn't diverse enough. To many, it may have seemed that our challenges outnumbered our opportunities. But now, as the governor reminded me recently, the Tampa Bay area is leading the state in the number of new jobs created. You know, when faced with these dire economic times, we could have decided to focus on the small things. But I don't know about you. 
but I didn't come here to sit down. Our future is not going to be decided for us. Our future is going to be decided by us. I didn't run for this office to be. I ran for this office to do. And it's because of people like you, the leadership of this community, the old and the new, the those that came before us, that gave us this foundation upon which we stand. We are doing it, ladies and gentlemen, and we are doing it together. Now, just a few blocks from here, and you saw her on the video, Linda Olson teamed up with the University of South Florida to create the Tampa First Wave Venture Center for Entrepreneurs and Startup Companies, beating out communities all over the country for a grant from the federal government. Not only is Todd Lewicki selling out the forum every night, but he's helping to champion a housing first homeless initiative in cooperation with our friends at Hillsborough County. Let me tell you something. Our relationship with Hillsborough County has never been better. It's never been stronger. And I thank the members of the Hillsborough County Board. I thank the Chairman Ken Hagen. I thank the Chairman before that, Al Hagen Botham. I thank Mike Merrill and the entire staff of Hillsborough County for recognizing that we are all in this together. The There's, there's no more us versus them. There's no more city versus county. We are better together. We are stronger together. We recognize that we are going to succeed together as a county, or we are going to fail alone. Paul Anderson, Rick Holmans, Yoli Gonzalez, Greg Celestan, and so many others are working to bring new businesses to Tampa and to expand our reach around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time that Tampa became the gateway to the Americas. We share a language, we share a culture, and ultimately we share a destiny. As the Panama Canal opens up, as Tampa International Airport expands its global reach, it is time for us to become the gateway to the Americas. I'm not playing second fiddle to Miami. It's our turn. But throughout this video, what you saw is that we're not limited anymore by silly parochial disagreements. For some of us, our families may not go back generations in Tampa, but we are standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. Certainly, I stand on the shoulders of Billy Poe and Dick Greco and Sandy Friedman and Bob Martinez, and Pam Iorio. I wouldn't be here today to talk about the state of the city had it not been for the hard work that was done before me by great mayors who set a standard for me to try to live up to. And we're, we're, we're not competing with ourselves, we're competing with Charlotte, and Atlanta, and Raleigh, Durham, and San Diego, the emerging Sunbelt cities around the country. We're not fighting with Hillsborough County. We're not fighting with St. Petersburg. I'm not even competing with Orlando. We're competing for those cities that would take our best and brightest kids and never send them back. We're not going to stand for that anymore. I am not losing my two little girls to Charlotte, North Carolina. I will be darned to let that happen. We, we don't care. We don't care anymore who's a Democrat or who's a Republican. We don't care who's rural, who's urban. We don't care who's Pinellas, who's Hillsborough. We don't care about those bridges that have divided us for years because, ladies and gentlemen, they are artificial boundaries on a map. We are in this together, and we're going to stand together, and we're going to rise together, and we're going to succeed together. Now, we've faced some tough times over the last couple of years. We all know it. Florida's been hit harder by the recession than virtually any state in the country. And Tampa has been no different. We've had to tighten our belt. We have 500 less employees than we had six or seven years ago. And I know it's been tough. I see it in the eyes of my neighbors and friends as I travel around this community. But we've done what we had to do. We didn't like having to do it. We didn't want to have to do it, but we did what we had to do. 
but we've continued to maintain those services. We've continued to invest in infrastructure. I am forever grateful every day for our city employees who get up never complaining, never whining, never asking for more than they know we can give, but who get up every day to do their job. I want every city employee that's here today to stand up and take a bow. These are your city employees. They get up every day to do this for you, ladies and gentlemen. They are proud to come to work. They are proud of this city, and I am so proud of them. Now, this year's not going to be an exception. Our deficit this year is close to $20 million. When I took office on April 1, 2011, it was $34 million. We're making progress. Last year, it was about $25 million. This year, it's about 20. We've got some tough decisions ahead of us. There is no low-hanging fruit. But we got through that recession by tightening our belt, without raising taxes, and without having to lay off city employees. We're going to try and do that again this year. Hopefully, this is the last bad year. But it's not going to be easy. The decisions that we make to balance our budget are going to reflect our priorities as a community. We'll continue to invest in our neighborhoods and invest in our infrastructure. Two months ago, in Sulphur Springs, the poorest neighborhood in the city of Tampa, we started to knock down 50 vacant, dilapidated houses. And I use the word houses liberally. In some cases, the roofs had caved in. In some cases, they had been burned up by arsonists. The one thing that was consistent, though, was that these houses were like a cancer on the adjoining property owners and on that historic community of Sulphur Springs. They had become magnets for drug dealers and prostitutes and gangbangers. They were a cancer, and they had to be eradicated. So on one Tuesday morning, I met a demolition crew on North 16th Street. And as that bulldozer started, a lady from across the street came running out of her house with her three-year-old baby. She said, what are you doing? I said, we're tearing down these houses. And she said, I've been praying for this. I've been praying for this. And she cried. Sulphur Springs is just one microcosm of this community. But we're going to change this city one block at a time. We're demolishing those houses. We're installing thousands of new street lights around the city. We're going to bring these neighborhoods back because the kids in Sulphur Springs, the kids in East Tampa, the kids in West Tampa deserve the same opportunities that my two girls on Davis Island deserve. They may not be my kids, but they're all of our kids. Crime continues to drop in this community. Over the last 10 years, thanks to the leadership of Jane Castor, and because of the work of the men and women in the Tampa Police Department, we've reduced crime by 60%, an unprecedented number. That's 100,000 less victims. That's us. Those men and women get up every day and do a job that I don't have the courage to do for myself. But there's more we can do. There's been a rash of gun violence in our inner cities where young men settle every dispute with a gun. Three weeks ago, I stood in an apartment parking lot in Jackson Heights, where two hours before, there had been dozens of little kids playing. I stood surrounded by 10 to 15 small orange cones, cones that indicated shell casings, because a young man the night before in Grant Park had been shot. So he decided, and his friends decided, that they were going to settle the score. And they came to Jackson Heights that Saturday afternoon and shot another young man. That could have been any one of those kids that was playing out there. And as I stood there, 
Somebody, a car pulled up behind me. And a woman got out of the car and she was talking on her phone and she was talking frantically on her phone. And I could tell that she was upset. And she saw me and she said, she said, Mayor, can you tell me who it was that got shot? She said, can you tell me the name of that young man that got shot? Because it may be my son. And she's calling and she's calling. And I asked the police officer to go find out the name of that young man. And he found out. And fortunately for that mom, it wasn't her son. But it could have been any one of our sons. Just imagine the fear in that mother, not knowing whether that was her son. We've got to do better. That young man is all of our sons. And we can't leave anybody behind. That's why I'm joining with Hillsborough County and the mayors of Temple Terrace, Plant City, as well as a broad-based community coalition to try and reduce violence in our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, as Jackson Heights goes, so goes Palmasia. As College Hill goes, so goes Colbert Isles. As East Tampa and West Tampa go, so goes New Tampa. We're investing in our infrastructure. We're an old city. We got old pipes. We got squirrels. <laughs> I hear die declare open season on squirrels. <laughs> All the PETA folks don't get upset. But infrastructure is important. It's not sexy. As the former mayors, and I see Mayor Greco here and Mayor Martinez, it's not sexy. It doesn't get you reelected, but it's got to get done. And we've got an aging infrastructure that we've got to stay on top of. In January, we opened up a much needed pump station on Aileen Avenue. Every year, even in a drizzle, when it looks like it's going to rain, that street floods. The new Tampa Boulevard bridge that we opened this month will ease traffic in Bruce B. Downs. Last June, we beat out hundreds of communities around the country for a Tiger grant that will allow us to finish that river walk, something that has been in the works since Mayor Billy Poe. <laughs> After six mayors in 30 years, every one of those mayors having done a portion of it, we are going to finish it, we're going to cut the ribbon on it, and that river will come alive like it's never come alive before. But it's not just bridges. It's new businesses opening in East Tampa. It's Time Warner moving 500 jobs. It's 1,700 new apartment units in West Shore. It's M2 Gen expanding in North Tampa. It's the thousands of people that every weekend I see in Curtis Six and Park. Families, kids playing in the fountain, dogs being walked, music being played, and thank God to turn the river green, greener than Chicago's river. This is what happens when you elect an Irishman mayor. It's an exciting time. Three new residential towers have been announced in the last three months, as well as hundreds of other units that are coming out of the ground as we speak. The Encore project just won $30 million from the Obama administration to finish that redevelopment, replacing a crime-ridden, drug-addled Central Park Village. There will be new life for those young people who live there. The seniors will now have a safe existence in that corner of our downtown will come to like life like we have never seen it before. Downtown's booming, like it was decades ago. I mean, just look across the street at the old federal courthouse. Just four weeks ago, we broke ground on the renovation of that federal courthouse. Years ago, judges and juries would busy themselves prosecuting cases from mobsters to Manuel Noriega. But next spring, that building will come to life again with hotel guests, a 120-room boutique hotel, a building that had been boarded up for 10 years, the most historically significant building in downtown Tampa, will come to life. It will be paying taxes. It will anchor the, this end of the North Franklin Street area. And the Crest Building is next.
When I think about the future of this community, I recognize that 10 years from now, that river needs to be the center of our downtown, not the western edge. For too long, we've turned our back on the river. For too long, we've ignored the river. For too long, we failed to realize that that river is the best asset that we have as a community. It makes us far more competitive and will become the focal point for everything that we do from now on, and that includes the West Bank as well. The Jewish Community Center is going to redo the armory. Howard and Armenia will be the western edge of our urban experience, and it will move all the way through the North Hyde Park area to Ybor City. Downtown is alive and well. It is more exciting than it has been in years. Now, I brought you to this historic Crest Building for a reason. At one point, downtown was the epicenter of Tampa's social life. This building and many of the others around it echoed with the sounds of families shopping, of people dining, of Tampanians who came here to visit with their friends. On February 29, 1960, a young man named Clarence Fort, who was the local leader of the NAACP Youth Council, walked in to the building right on the other side of this wall. It was the Woolworth building. He sat down at the lunch counter. Now that may not seem extraordinary today, but back then, the manager turned the lights off and put up a closed sign. Clarence and other young African Americans continued to turn up at the restaurant across Tampa. And after every sit-in, a few more would join the cause. The civil rights movement in Tampa was organized largely by young people like Clarence Ford. They sat down at lunch counters across the city and across the country so that today others would be able to stand up. Clarence Ford is here today. Clarence, thank you. Stand up. You see, these old buildings, this Crest Building and the Federal Courthouse are part of Tampa's history, but more importantly, they're part of Tampa's future. We stand here today on the shoulders of many who came before us, people like Clarence Fort, and we are charged with transforming their history into a bright future. You know, last August, when the world was watching and a hurricane was approaching, this community stood up like it had never stood up before. When the eyes of the world were on us, we performed. We danced on that international stage like we've never danced before. And when the folks in India were watching Tampa, Florida, they saw a city that was well run, a city that hosted the second most viewed television event in the entire world and did it flawlessly and set the standard for how those types of events should be handled I don't know about you, but I am so proud of this community for what we did last August. Now we got to hold on to that pride. We got to remember all the time how good it felt to see Tampa on the stage. We don't have to settle anymore. We're not aspiring for second best. This is where we belong. We can be a city whose urban core extends from Ybor City to West Shore, where the Hillsborough River is the center of our downtown. We can be the economic engine that leads Florida out of this recession. We can be a region with a first-class transportation system. We need mobility options now. That means bus rapid transit, that means HOV, and it darn sure means rail. Tallahassee needs to let the cities decide for themselves what their future is going to look like. Don't tell me that rail doesn't pay for itself. Don't tell me that I have to listen to the mayor of Detroit thank me because he was building his light rail system with our money. If folks in Tallahassee don't want to support us, we'll find folks in Tallahassee that will.
Tampa, we can do anything together. Together. I don't want to be the mayor of a city that demonizes people based on race or creed or color or ethnicity. I don't care what God you worship or who you love. We are in this together. We, we are stronger in that diversity. We are better in that diversity. That is what separates us. That is what makes us different. That is what makes us more competitive. We need to honor that diversity and celebrate it and hold each other up, not drive each other down, not reach for that lowest common denominator. We are all in this together, folks. We are Tampanians, regardless of where you came from or how you got here. We're in this together. And we're going to succeed together or not at all. Ladies and gentlemen, I need your help. If you're a developer, if you're a developer, bring me a deal that's good for your bottom line and great for our community. If you're an architect or a planner, bring me good design. If you're an entrepreneur, take a chance. If you're a neighborhood leader, keep fighting the fight. We're there with you. If you're a parent, think about your kids. Tampa, it's time to think big. It's time to dream big. Our dreams and our opportunities are only limited by the boundaries of our expectations. Like that young man in the video, and I showed that for a reason, there's no failure and falling. The only failure is not getting up. You got to want it. You got to want it really bad. You got to want it so bad, like he said, that you forget to eat and sleep. It's not about us. It's about the legacy that we're going to leave to our kids. Because ultimately, someday, Tampa, they're going to ask us. Our kids are going to ask us. Grace and Colleen Buckhorn are going to ask me. They're going to say, Daddy, what did you do? What did you do to make this a better place? What did you do to leave me a city that I'm proud of? What did you do to leave me an environment where I can take the education that you and your mom gave to me and come home and raise my families? What did you do to prevent my friends from leaving for Charlotte and Raleigh-Durham and Austin, Texas? Daddy, what did you do? What did you do? And that's the question that all of our kids are going to ask us. So the choice is simple, Tampa. What are we going to do? Are we going to believe that we can get to that promised land? Are we not going to settle for second best? Are our aspirations going to reach higher and higher? We don't have to settle for mediocrity, folks. This is a great place, and we are going to take our turn on the stage of great American cities. Tampa, this is our time. This is our turn, and this is our destiny. Thank you.